Alrighty guys, so got this, what year is this, 98 Sportsman, 99, 99 I think, Sportsman 500, been sitting at least three to five years, don't know the last time it ran, basically got to put a new battery in it, he didn't have the key for it, he got me a different switch that was incorrect, but turns out the key that he got with the new switch fits this old ignition, so we're going to use that, uh, I got to get the battery cables cleaned up, I did remove the air box, which is scuzzy to say the least um, and then we'll just see if it turns over see if it's got spark and then we'll see what the fuel system is looking like because I can already envision bad things are going to be living in the tank so we'll get that looked at once I get the battery and we'll see if she turns on and turns over at least but she's oily I'm talking so oily. with the sportsman here ended up getting the carburetor off the tank was bone dry, so that saved us a little bit of time there. Uh, where the heck did, I had the carburetor sitting in my ultrasonic. Indeed. Basically getting the scuzz off the outer side of the carburetor so we don't get crap inside and I have more to do afterward. And oh my god, look at the track on that Yamaha, that looks scary. And when I was pulling it over, I damn near threw me over the other side because I did a half pull and it grabbed and I just... Yeah, so basically I think the starter is internally bad and shorted. Um, very, very high, I would say, current flow going to the starter. The wire was hot. Um, and I'm getting 12 volts there, and I have a good ground. We also jumped the starter solenoid directly. So that tells us if it doesn't turn over then, it shouldn't turn over at all then. Um, so it probably needs a starter. We're not going to worry about a starter yet until we at least get the carburetor working, cleaned, see if it runs with the rope starter, see how it, how it idles. These sportsmen are known for eating camshafts, so we don't know if this thing's even going to rev up. So, yeah. High, high zinc oil? Is it high zinc oil? High zinc, apparently. Okay. It's supposed to help with Mojave's and uh, probably the sportsmen's. But the sportsmen's had a defective design. Um, there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> Pretty much it's meant to be at that point. Um, but yeah, this flashlight's been chilling on for a while, so we'll turn that off. Uh, like I said, new batteries installed, and we just did some voltage testing, and, and, and like I said, it led it to a starter being not functional. What about that boot that uh, breathes the transmission? That oh. CVT breather? Yeah, that thing ripped, for sure. And they pinched the ground, is like pinched in the clutch cover in two different spots. Like somebody had the clutch cover off to service the belt, but they just bonsai the, the case. Look at it back here. It's literally pinched. Oh. It's pinched in the cover. That's not on there. It's not supposed to be in there. That transmission is too and this thing's so oily. Every time I tried working on it, I have to wipe my hands because I couldn't touch anything because <laughs> it was just full of scuzz. Yep. Varnish in the car, bad. Did hear it run though, guys. This thing did run. I didn't feel like turning the camera on until we get this thing bolted back on with the carb. Um, and I'll go through kind of the assembly of putting the carburetor back in. Fairly simple on these sportsmen. I've been working on them a lot lately, so that tells you how reliable they are. So yeah, we're just going to get the carburetor cleaned out. I'll probably have... Uh, Sullivan, hold the camera, we'll get a little look inside, see what the bowl looks like, and get her cleaned up, and uh, see if she runs. Working on this carburetor off that Sportsman 500, got the bowl screws out. Number one thing you're going to need when you work on carburetors that may or may not have been taken apart already, one of these hand impacts. This is made by Matco. Uh, there's a part number there. Can't see it with the light. The light. Oh, there we go, perfect. Harbor Freight makes one just like this, very cheap, works just as good. Basically, it gives a little shock when you uh, Turn hammer down on it. Just It's almost like acting like an impact. It's called a hand impact. So we got the one. We'll replace the one that's really messed up. The rest of them we can reuse. Yeah, this corner one over there. We'll see what the bowl looks like. I mean, some of this is water because I had water you know, in my... Right. Oh, no wonder. Oh, the float doesn't even... That's why I got no fucking... <laughs> no gas is getting in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ain't got no gas in it. So what we're going to have to do is we've got to take a pin punch... I think it's got to go the other way. And we have to unscrew, or we have to go out that way. Yep. And we have to unfuckulate the float. Right. And then we'll take the They're main new. jet pilot, and we'll take the fuel screw out, and we'll it's take good. the vacuum slide out, and we'll clean everything, and then we'll put it back together. <laughs> because he did have to pry up on the, the vacuum slide was frozen in there. Oh, this guy's, yeah. <laughs> and then um, the good thing is, guys, is that the bowl gasket's saved, and it's nice and pressed in on the bottom part of the bowl. Exactly. Which is very good. I'll show you guys a little trick when you're moving these float pins. One thing you want to remember is which way did the float pin go in? Because it's naturally going to go back easier one way. So we know that we need this end to the so the the spigot here, which would be the fuel in. We know the big end has to go towards the fuel inlet. So that's how we'll put it back in. What I like to do if I can get it to move, I'll put a, a side cutters behind the ear and I'll 
you pry against it, less chance of breaking the ears off. So I will see if I can get it working and then we'll, if I get it out, I'll show you how I did it and then we can turn the camera back on. So use this little punch, had an assistant help me to, I, I kind of held the ear because if you just ram on it, it could snap. So I kind of hold it down to kind of keep the shocks from going sideways. Just got it moving. I took this very small side cutters, went at it like this, and then I'll show you here, it'll come out. I moved it and we just pry it out like that. And you can see all the varnish. Look at the varnish that's on there, causing it not to, probably it half, the reason, smoothly. half the reason why this thing well, move is because the varnish got stuck on the float pin. As soon as we got to move a little bit, guys, then it freed the float. We can move the float then. So half of it, it was with that the, the pin wasn't letting it pivot? Correct. It was basically like uh, when you got a seized bolt, seized bolt in, a, in a shaft. Now that's a lot of damage. Just, you know, taking my time, just kind of. And this is also a technique you want to use to get cotter pins out. Same technique. And we'll take this, we'll basically take it to the wire wheel or, or, or scotch bright it and we'll get it nice and shined up so that float pin's got none of that nasty scuzz and I marred it up a little bit from the side cutters but better than snapping off the ears of the, of the uh, carburetor. And we'll take our float needle out, which doesn't look bad. It doesn't, isn't too varnished over. I'll probably just leave that connected to the float. And then we'll leave all this stuff on here. Um, basically, that's your removable needle seat on these Polarises. You take these two Phillips, which always strip off. Let me tell you, I know that from experience. And basically, there's an O-ring underneath here that's pressed in uh, to seal off any gas. And that's connected right here with this inlet. Uh, usually, they're pretty good. What you can do is take a little uh, Q-tip uh, sometimes and just clean it out. We're just going to look for, make sure there's no varnish or something stuck in the bottom. Um, next, we're going to take the jets out. And then I'll tell you guys how to take the vacuum slides out of these. Basically what I'll do is the first thing I'll do is I'll mark a, a corner of the top so I put it on the exact same direction. It just makes it easier to seal the gasket because those slides, oh and something fall, those slides are very important. I mean if you have one tear in the diaphragm, one little pinhole, run like absolute oh, yeah. crap. And I'll tell you guys how to test them afterward too just so you can check your work and just kind of know the sound of the slide versus one that's pinched. I'm pretty sure I bought a brand new carburetor aftermarket with a pinch slide for one of these because uh, it doesn't act the same. So I will get these jets out with my handy jet screwdriver. I think I had that huge fly that I over here somewhere. I'll get the main jet out. Main jet's basically got a uh, washer underneath it. And then if it's genuine Makuni, you'll see the numbering on the top, which this is, it's a 155 and it's got a little bit of scuzz in it. And here's that washer I was telling you about. Some Polarises have this, some don't. I can see all the nasty stuff. I'm, I'm gonna take the tube out too, but I gotta get the vacuum slide off first. So I'll take, take the pilot jet out and the pilot fuel screw. Then I'll take the carburetor upside down and then I'll pull that out. So here's the car body disassembled. Um, basically what I do is I scribe a mark on the cover on the top of the diaphragm slide either which, you know, I mark on the car body, whether it's intake or air cleaner side. Um, and I slide that out. This happened to stay with the diaphragm. Sometimes you'll just get the cover and you have to peel the diaphragm out. And the diaphragm on a Polaris only goes one way. There's a little divot here. So you can only put a new one. If you ever put a new one in, you got to make sure you put it on the right way because so, it has that little indent. Oh, focus. Okay. Yep. So that's right there. Right down there is also a jet, guys. I'm pretty sure it's called the leak jet. Don't quote me on that, but it's definitely connected with the main jet. Definitely important to make sure that's clean. Uh, usually I just spray through it, and this one's sprayed through just fine. Um, and then make sure you get this kind of clean. There's sometimes get carbon buildup where the slide goes in and out. Um, I know this one here is going to do a lot better now that it's cleaned. Um, you also don't want to forget about this air bleed right here. I'll see if you can put a glare on there. But that, uh, that is important as well. That's, that's connected with the jet passages. Make sure that's clean. Pilot jet's here, or was here. Main jet and tube. And that tube is this piece right here. And basically that comes out and it only goes in one way. It's got a little flat on it. 
And you'll see inside the carburetor, there's a little flat here. You can only put it in one way. You don't force it in there. That you'll be able to see, and you don't want to force, the, the jet tube's only going to go in one way like that. You don't want to, if you, it doesn't go in there nice and easy, don't freaking get the hammer out and hammer it in there because it's not going to be good. It might hold, but it's going to turn. Um, so that's, that's kind of important. I usually take them out just because I get all these holes clean. Um, it's just good practice to do that. And then basically I clean the entire outside. I mean, this thing was scuzzy. It looks a lot better now. You're talking about the little passageways. And then also, guys, when you're looking at these carburetors, I did take out the pilot fuel screw. I couldn't get the little flat washer and O-ring out. I left it in there. I'm going to be mindful to watch because if I don't see the silver, I know that fell out. And if I don't see the rubber, I know they both came out. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's this little screw here, that spring. Um, and then there's a flat washer and a rubber O-ring that seals your fuel adjustment for the uh, pilot circuit. So that's also important to take that out um, so that passage gets cleaned. And then you'll see these three other ports um, by the throttle butterfly. That Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a screw. And this is also helpful when you're dis taking out the throttle cable. Um, what I do is I take a either a 10 millimeter socket, fits perfect in here, and you set that right in there keeps the throttle open for you. That way you can actually clean it better too and get some of the carbon right here where the throttle plate's always resting. Take a little emery paper. So you can see there's three ports inside there. I'll get a pick tool, I might focus on it then. So you can see, oh yeah, that might focus now. Anyways guys, there's three little holes right underneath the throttle plate behind it. Those gotta be clean too. Sometimes you can take a little wire brush at a 90 degree angle and stick it in there just to make sure they're clean. Sometimes you can just spray through there with air. Um, they don't get clogged often, but it will create a bog um, transitioning between pilot and mid circuit. So you'll get a little hesitation. Those are usually the culprit. Uh, nine times out of 10, if you do a good job just cleaning it, you won't have a problem with that. But Especially if you're feeling reckless. Oh yeah, so now I just gotta clean <laughs> a little bit more. Let me get this thing back together. I got Emery, or Scott's right the Beautiful RMZ right here. Gotta get this shot. Great form on that. Definitely there. didn't zoom in on your package there. <laughs> on your package. One other thing that we got to do is we got to clean the scuzz where that diaphragm sits. Usually what I'll take is my tool of choice. <laughs> and I just scrape around there. It's basically like just dried up. I don't know if it's ethanol bacteria or what. For short, we'll just say it's shit. <laughs> like you said to that one guy, he's got shit in his radiator. Shit you not. I <laughs> shit you not. You got shit in the radiator. And he he, he fully went around. He, he went along with it too. He was like, yeah, shit usually gets in there. I was like, damn, this guy must be dumping on that radiator. So I'm just taking a flat blade here. And just scraping some of that out. Just helps the diaphragm seat. Obviously you want this flat so it'll seal again. And then what I'll do is I'll take compressed air and I'll just blow the remaining debris out. And then uh, just gotta clean the float bowl a little bit, just get some of the scuzz. Float bowl wasn't actually that bad. And we'll pick up and the disassemble process. I mean the reassemble yep, process. Yep, you can see guys. So basically I put the slide back in. I marked the air cleaner side with you know so the slide goes in the same way. Probably can't put it in backwards, but for the sheer fact of marking it, I did. You can see that little flat here for the diaphragm. Basically, all we gotta do is put the spring in and the cover on the bottom main jet with the washer. Screws into that tube that we had taken out. Remember, it only goes in one way with the flat piece or the flat side. Lines up with a little indentation in the body of the carb, and then it'll sit flush in the body of the carburetor. And that's what your needle pulls fuel out of. So now that we got the diaphragm back in, we basically can take our cover, which we had marked with the scribe. So that goes to the air cleaner side. And then 
we put the cover back on. Kind of feel it sit flush all the way around. It looks it's pretty good fairly good. Let's see our marks line up. Screws. Put the little screws and I'm going to show you guys how to test this. Um, after you're done so you don't have to worry about, okay, maybe I ripped the diaphragm. Well, this should tell you right away um, if you did or not. So if you guys can hear that, that sucking, that <laughs> sounds like your mom last night. That's a good indication that the slide is working. I'm going to ignore that comment for now. <laughs> I'm just getting these snugged up. Like I said, you don't need to go too tight on them. And then I'll show you guys the other way of testing it. So you can hear that, that that's making a good noise and it's returning. If this slide gets stuck and doesn't come back, you've got something wrong. Either the spring is not in that little indentation and it got kinked or, or something's bound up. So it's got to return, make sure you do that. Now what you're going to do guys to test it is take air, blow across there. See that? See how the slide lifts? That's basically simulating intake vacuum. So that tells me the slide's probably going to be fine and it's going to work. Yes! Oh, I think I lost that little washer. Which one? For the pilot fuel screw. Uh, here it is, dude. <laughs> what are the odds, boys, that I what found? I can see the owl ring in there. All I'm gonna do. The owl ring. <laughs> all I'm gonna do is drop that back in there. Nice. And I'm gonna put this in before we forget about it and we drop. And tip the hybrid upside down. <laughs> you can see there's a little layer of, of old varnish. That's minor. And there's a very fine tip on these. It's not like an air screw on a two-stroke, where it's a lot more blunt. These fuel screws are very fine. It actually screws. If you screw them all the way, and you'll see the end of it protrude through the carb body. Then you know you didn't break the end of it off that way, too, because I've seen guys snap the ends off. There's a billet one up there. Yep. So I'm just getting some of the, the scuzziness off of here. Just helps with overall sealing and just everything like that. And we're going to set this at two turns for these sportsmen. That's a very good starting point. That's, I think that's what the manual calls for. Um, and you can always fine tune it from there. Remember your spring. I have the flat washer and the O-ring already in there. So all we do is we set that in there. Take my handy little uh, flathead screwdriver. And I'll show you guys the procedure of putting one of these in. You always want to snap it off. <laughs> so I'll get it all the way in and seated. And you guys will see the end of it come through the carburetor itself. Okay, so you guys can see that. It's actually sticking out through the carburetor. Maybe we can get a focus on that. So you guys can see that end of it is sticking out. Right there. So that's fully seated. Remember, I only went in with about two fingers. That's, that's it. And that's also on the daily. <laughs> Anyways, we're seated. Half. One. Half, two. You can barely just see Two it. turns, and it'll be below the surface. That's yeah. how you know you, you did something right. Um, so that's done. Main jet's in. Now we need our little pilot jet. This happens to be a 40. These are very small pilot, pilot jets. Um, we blew through the orifice with brake cleaner, and then I always do the light test, and I can see daylight through the end of it. <sighs> so that is a good sign. And I blew through the passage in there, so I know that's clean. That means this jet can go back in. The pilot's pretty much the most important thing for starting and, and just overall running. Um, it, it feeds everything else. A lot of guys say it doesn't matter. Well, it does kind of affect the other ranges. And that's all about the tight, neat, tightness you need there. Main jet's tight. Uh, now we need to work on that float and make sure that moves nice and freely. I'm looking in the needle seat and I'm looking for debris. I don't see anything. I'll show you a quick little reference test. You guys can do the blow test. Uh, just by mouth pressure on the needle. 
if you have a defective one or like one of those china ones or one that has a ring on it you will notice a leak just by the amount of pressure you can get by blowing um, and that's usually a good indicator that it's not going to seal if it doesn't hold air it ain't it, it's just not going to hold fuel so um, other than that that's about it for the internals of the carb